afternoon guys and welcome to today's video. So the time has finally come to go ahead and take apart the uh, GT500 differential. We're going to go ahead and uh, take care of pretty much everything that's wrong with it. If you haven't been caught up or seen the previous videos, long story short, the, um, uh, the previous differential has some pretty bad wear in it. I'll go a little more in detail once I pull it out and I can show you guys exactly what's going on. But uh, long, pretty much I used the wrong, uh, wrong gear oil. It is a Eaton uh, True Track and requires a little bit different stuff than what comes factory in the Ford. I didn't know that at the time. Um, so we live and learn. Anyway, it's been causing some weird grinding issues. Not grinding necessarily, but like a, like a smooth, just scraping sound is the best way to put it. And when I pull it apart, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So the uh, reason it's been taking me so long is I had to go ahead and figure out, um, I had to buy some additional tools, I had to buy a new press, I had to buy a uh, vise and some other stuff to be able to do this job. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the wheels off, get this thing jacked up, and probably take you right up to where I'm about to remove the diff before I come back. Just because I've already shown this in previous videos and there's really no point in my opinion. So, uh, yep, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So anyway, guys, I'll, uh, I'm gonna start get working and then um, catch back up with you in a minute. So this is not the same day that we started filming this. Um, I finally got my second C-clip out and this thing was a straight nightmare, I'm gonna be honest. This is one of the reasons I've been putting this off. So what I had to do was I took a Dremel tool and I was able to get a lot of the worn material. So basically what happened is, right, the gear kind of just started wearing material up over like that and creating a lip inside of there, which is kind of hard to see, but maybe you can get the idea. And where the shiny part is, that's what I had to grind down and let, in order to let the C-clip and axle slide it out. So after grinding it for a while, um, I got most of it out and then I wound up having to take a sledgehammer because I couldn't get enough force to pop it through and bend the metal the last little bit. So I took a sledgehammer, two wax on the end of the axle, and uh, finally popped out. Thankfully, we're finally able to get this diff out. So what we're going to do right before we pull this out, uh, it's pretty easy, these four bolts right here, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a dial gauge, and we're going to measure. So see that little bit of movement right there? We gotta see and make sure that because these gears are already lapped together, about the same amount of movement when we put it back together, that'll help ensure that everything is happy and we don't have any issues. So the way that this gets adjusted is there are gears, or I'm sorry, so there are bearings behind here and there are spacers behind those, and those spacers will adjust this whole assembly uh, left and right, and then in turn will adjust how much movement we have here. So this one's actually pretty tight. The last Mustang I worked on was my Mustang GT and actually like looked at the gears and those were significantly looser. However, I know this works, I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, basically the goal is to get the same amount of lash that we have here uh, into the new setup. So all we're doing in this video is replacing this. So this ring gear is gonna come off, it's gonna go back on the new one and uh, that's kind of the goal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on, uh, probably on time lapse, we're gonna get this figured out and I'll show you exactly what's going on. How this dial gauge works, as you can see right here, have it set up, and uh, all we gotta do is turn the gear, sorry, it's extremely tight down here. But all we gotta do is turn the gear just a hair, and you can see right now we're at zero, so I have it set to zero. And we go right to, it looks like just a hair over 10, so 10.1, and that is the lash we are aiming to get to once we get it back. So it's not much, but that's all it needs. So, yeah, read right about, read right about at 10 should do the trick. So we're gonna try to maintain this angle as best possible before we put this back on, and uh, that's what we're after. This looks like about 10, which is like super small. I think it's like a thousandth of an inch or something like that. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. All I know is the dial has to move to there. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and keep doing. So I went ahead and pulled it out, and uh, as you can see, so these are the only spacers they had in there, which is kind of weird. It's not what I expected to find at all. Um, 
No idea if it's a factory forward part or not, but this thing was very tight. So I'm a little concerned about trying to get this back in. However, the spacers are tapered a bit. I mean, hopefully we can figure it out, but it is what it is, guys. So she's out, that's for sure. That's the good part. Uh, that's the pumpkin right there, as you can see. Got Ford 373 inscribed right there. Can't tell what the rest of that says, but good enough. We know the 373s, that's, that's never really for doubt. So anyway, this is the, uh, this is our race. Um, I can't think of the word I'm thinking of thing. And this is our bearings. Um, everything looks in pretty good shape. Obviously the differential is our main problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this down to the workbench and uh, we're gonna start putting those new tools I just picked up to use. Pretty much the only thing getting swapped over is the gear. Everything else, obviously bearings, they're pressed on. They're gonna stay on there. I'm not fighting with that. It's got new ones. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head, uh, head down. So as you can see, we have this uh, set up in our new vise, just big enough, thankfully. And uh, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and undo all these bolts right here, set them off to the side, and then hopefully we can get this ring gear off. Then we're gonna pull out the new one and uh, start pressing on bearings and stuff. So as you can see, it's now apart. This is the old one. Our gear is hanging out right there, and this is our new one. So right in here, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see the gears. And I mean, these things are very solid. There's really no movement. Put a little uh, lube on here just to keep make sure nothing rusts. It's like stupid humid out. I think this started to have a little surface rust. I'm just sitting out a little bit. Anyway, though. All right. So basically, you can see all that wear, where it's all messed up on the top side there. Uh, some of that grittiness is from what I was scraping. It most of it's not natural, but. This side was the one that was really bad. You can see that huge lip that formed and that was holding in the gear. So I ground it down on the bottom there, ground it down on the top, but I couldn't get it past that lip in the back. So that's basically where the sledgehammer came into play and uh, knocked it out. But I mean, this side didn't wear nearly as bad as that side did. Ironically enough, this is the side when it's in the vehicle, it actually goes like this. And this is the one that was giving me a lot of problems. Um, not this, one necessarily but this side seemed to be locking up more and trying to drive the car that way while this side didn't if this is what was causing me to go sideways down the track my guess it might have also been this uh the axle being out of whack probably didn't help anything but if this was getting more friction i.e locking up better than this side was it's very possible that was causing me to go uh the wrong direction so now that we have the new one here i'm going to go ahead and pull out the uh pull out these gears we're gonna figure out the proper orientation. So these are all the spacers right in the bottom here that came with these gears. And that's what I'm a little concerned about is the new, the old, sorry, the one that's in there right now just has that one block. So I'm gonna try and install it with that block, see how everything fits together. If it fits together and I have the same clearances that I did with this one, then I'm just gonna send it. If it doesn't fit together, that's where it's gonna get real fun. Cause this was a pain in the butt to get out. And I'm suspecting this is not gonna be any more fun to get back in. So. I really want to make sure this is done right. Um, just, it's going to kind of suck if that's what happens. Is that, yeah, yeah, awesome. 10 mil, of course it is. Anyway, uh, so yeah, these are all the spacers right here. I mean, you can see there's some skinny ones, some fat ones. So I guess they must've just made a custom spacer. That's, I guess what happened, but that yeah, thing looks huge. I don't know, we'll figure it out guys. So let's, uh, Next task, I guess, is going to be to press these guys out. Let me pull these out and see how they look. All right, so as you can see, went ahead and got everything lined up on the press as best as I can. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, slowly work this thing on here, and hopefully we don't have any problems. But it has an interesting guide piece, and then uh, what I'm going to hopefully do is just have it press right against there, not have any problems. It shouldn't take a crazy amount of force. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. So let's go ahead and send it. All right, so as you can see, this went really smooth. Don't mind all this stuff. It's a little bit of condensation from being cold and uh, some of the oil I put on, so it's good. Anyway, I used a, a um, man, I cannot think of what these things are called. It's killing me right now. These things to press in here, make sure I didn't put direct pressure on any of these bearing rings or uh, bearings themselves. Hurt anything, so as you can see, it's on. Spins just fine. Looks just like this one does over here. 
Uh, so we should be good to go. And there you go. So now that the bearings are on nice and good, just like these were, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put on the ring gear. So I've heard you can press on the ring gear and then bolt it down or bolt it down. Pretty much you can kind of do different uh, combinations of it. What I'm gonna do is pretty much put it on the exact opposite way I took it off. So we're gonna put this back in the vise right there. I'm gonna set the gear down first and then this down. We're just gonna transfer one bolt over at a time. Maybe, that may not work. Yeah, it'll work. I'm gonna put them all on the top and then we'll just do one at a time. That'll work. One of these is actually really sketchy. It looks like they may have cross-threaded. I believe it's one of these. You can see that shininess on the threads. So I'm a little concerned that's just, uh, looks like red Loctite. I want to, I'm really concerned that they may have cross-threaded one or two of these. So I want to make sure these go in the exact same holes. So if they are cross-threaded, you know, they still kind of match up. Not ideal. I really don't think they are, but some of them look a little sketch. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. Anyway, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll set this in the vise real quick. And then we're going to start putting on the ring gear. I need to look up the torque spec for that real quick before I send it. But we're going to go very evenly all the way around and just kind of get it snug. And then we'll figure out what the torque is. And it's probably going to be in stages. We'll come, we'll get to it when we come to it. So we just got the ring gear not torqued down, but just snugged down. So as you can see, I pretty much went around evenly, got everything snugged up. And uh, according to the old manual here, it looks like we're going to be doing uh, about 100 foot-pounds on these bolts, which... It's fine, so the official one is 97 to 102, so we're going to go with 100. I'm going to do this in increments. We're going to go up to 50, 75, and then 100 in a star pattern, just to make sure everything is even. I don't, really don't want to have any issues with this, so that's what we're going to do next. Went ahead and got my torque wrench out right there, and uh, these are all 16 millimeter bolts, which is the first time in his show I've ever seen a 16 mil on a Ford, but it is what it is. <laughs> Alrighty, so they are all torqued down now, no issue. Now this is done, um, well, I guess time to bring everything back to the car. Time to go figure out, uh, figure out how to put this thing back in. So I'm gonna flip you guys on time lapse because I don't should be super bored. And hopefully these stock spacers, well not stock spacers, I'm pretty sure these are custom spacer. I don't know what they used, but I'm pretty sure they probably just milled it down until it was right. So we'll stick these back in place and uh, see if we can't get this diff in. It was pretty tough coming out, so uh, we'll see how well this goes. Anyhow, without further ado, flip me on time lapse and uh, we'll get this guy back in. Alrighty, so we went ahead and got it snugged down. As you can see, I just messed around with this a little bit. Whoops, crap. Uh, you're not supposed to move this stuff. All right, let's see if that'll... So long story short, if we flip this to zero, which of course is gonna be difficult now, it's gauge the pain in the butt. Very sensitive. The idea is you wanna zero it out so you can see where zero is. And we're just about a thou or so. I think it's a thousandth, which is pretty much exactly where it needs to be. So it really didn't change from where it was before, which is good. I mean, you don't need to worry about respacing it. All we got to do is torque these down. And uh, yeah, we're actually really close to getting done here. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and install our uh, bearing cap bolts, what these are called. Those guys right there and there. And those are each torqued down to 90 to 100 foot-pounds is what it says. So I'm going to go a little conservative on this. We're going to go with like, well, we'll start with 90, make sure everything clicks properly, and then we'll, uh, this will bump it up to like 95 and call it good there. So get these back to you together. I have a small amount of trust issues with my torque wrench. One or two of the bolts when I was tightening that didn't feel like it would click. Backed off a couple times, and then all of a sudden it clicked, indicating it's not acting at 100% right now. So I'm really trying to make sure I don't jack anything up and strip anything out. So we're gonna go ahead and go for 90 first, make sure we're good. Maybe even 75, make sure we're good, then bump it up to 90. So, yep, that's what's up next, guys. All right, 
so they're now torqued down to 95 foot pounds what i went with right in where they're supposed to be oh man so our next job is go ahead and slide in our axles should be pretty easy let's see if i can get this one handed real quick Ooh, hang on all right let's see it there we go one axle Ooh, probably gonna pull that out and clean it up actually i forgot i had crap all over that thing and there's our one axle we gotta pop in that then we're gonna put our c-clip on and uh then we're gonna go ahead and get the other one and we'll be good to go c-clips are installed and went ahead and threw our spacer in there so from eaton they give you two spacers one has this very tiny groove on it the other one has a bigger groove so i was very curious to see if the smaller if this one would even fit it does not it is actually too big in the instructions it says blatantly use the one with the groove if you have an 09 to 0 or 05 to 09 mustang um that's what this category falls into but i was honestly just curious because i wasn't sure if it would fit or if it was just not able to at all because it's not able to at all obviously that makes sense cool so went ahead and got our snap ring installed as you can see right here uh something to note so these are some just cheap old harbor fray snap ring pliers you can literally see that they are bent i actually hammered these back but definitely get yourself a pair of quality snap ring pliers these things i mean they're good for small stuff obviously but when it comes to something like this that was a real pain in the butt but got everything seated so that's good um i think next up i'm going to go ahead and start pulling out the pieces well i'm going to clean up this area of all this extra crap i don't need right now and then i'm going to pull out that diff brace and see exactly how that fits in here so bear with me and that's what we're going to do next all right so i went ahead and got the surfaces all cleaned up on here so it looks like for the brace to go on we got to go ahead and uh clean up those surfaces we're going to lay our new seal put most of the bolts in the bottom ones are going to have to come back out but that's no big deal as long as the initial seal is there we'll be good and uh, then we're going to start messing around with this brace. I think that's going to be a totally separate video. This has been kind of long for a while, but as you can see, the new diff is installed. Um, everything seems to be good. So can't go on a test drive right now just yet, obviously, because we still have more stuff to do. But that's a huge relief. I'm very happy to see that it's back together. I could throw it back together right now and drive it, but then I have to pull it apart again, as I was just saying, for the diff brace to go on. All right, guys, so as I was saying, that's going to cut it out for this video. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you learned something and enjoyed the video as well. Never install the Eden True Track or differential in general. Hopefully, this inspired you a little bit. I've never messed with the differentials at all besides changing the fluid. This is my first time. It seemed pretty straightforward. Granted, I was in a slightly unique circumstance and blow up a ring gear, have to redo the gears at all. Just the differential was swapped out, so it's not too bad. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you. So, without further ado, I will uh, see you in the next one, and have a great day.